I, I typically think of Dries's aesthetic as being similar to, say, um, like Hyder Ackerman in, in terms mm. of like they're like they, they love certain like really lavish materials. They kind of do like pirate stuff, pirate garbs. <laughs> um, what so for people who are listening, what are you showing us on the screen, Killian? So I'm just pulling through. I've got a few collections that that felt notable to me. The first one that's up here is spring summer uh, 2000. And I think this one, it's a bit outside of the norm in that it's a bit muted in its colors, like not as, as mm -hmm. out there in the, in the colors and patterns. But I think shows like the ways in which he can be both fashion forward, um, but also in incredibly wearable. Yeah. Like we're and, looking and through pieces, nice knits. Um, also there's like some weird gender bending stuff. We saw some kind of like kilt type skirts and things. It's kilt. Yeah. Oh God. Um, I, I, I think, yeah, I, this is definitely like, honestly, if somebody showed me this, I wouldn't have guessed it was trees. Yeah. Just because he has a distinct style. I feel like at least in, in contemporary terms and yeah. for more context, like Drees has been, his label has existed since the eighties. So he's been kicking it for years and years and also he has for at least until they did that documentary he has been an independent designer like his label has not been yeah. owned by one of the evil conglomerates um so like that's also like a real that's a that's a flex i mean it, this is not an yeah. easy industry to exist in high fashion is like a tightrope walk and Dries has both been able to like to sell well, to be in the major department stores, to become kind of like a, a label that people recognize. And mm -hmm. he's been doing it his, his, him, himself. But um, there was that documentary that came out in recent years titled mm -hmm. Just Drees. It was, it was titled Drees. Drees. Um, and, and I'm pretty sure he talks about how he ultimately did sell the majority of his. Yeah, to uh, Puig, Puig. Something like that. It's pronounced this. It's pronounced like. But I think he is still. I So he, there's no way to know what exactly this means. But I read that he is still a like major minority shareholder. Like I think yeah. he may have sold like 51% or whatever to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like um, Helmet Lang. When he initially sold his brand to Prada. He, he sold them like 51%. And then when he left, he just gave it. He was like, I'm done. Right. He's I'm out. I'm, I'm out. I'm going to go burn my samples. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I, I now we've seen 2000. Uh -huh. I want to fast forward 14 uh -huh. years to fall 2014. And I want you to look at this and keep in mind the year that it was made. And some of the things that he was doing that maybe um, – I don't know. I don't want to say we're underappreciated at the time, but looking at it with a time. modern lens, make it more impressive. I would say. And, and I just want to remind anybody who's just listening. Mm -hmm. We do this as a live stream every Thursday at 8 PM on youtube.com at the channel, the bias cut. So yeah. we, we, we will try to like do closed captioning and say what we're looking at. But if you want to get in on the fun, join us live. Comment down and below we do have an stuff. inspiration for how we're going to approach this. Um, uh, Netflix does something. Do you want to tell the people about it? Oh, I, I, I mean, fine, I will. Um, this is going to be our, this is our this. philosophy on closed captioning. Yeah, yeah. I discovered this. Um, I think it's Netflix. There is like this option for some of their shows where I believe it's essentially made for blind people or people who are visually impaired where it'll be like, you know, characters talking, blah, blah, blah. And then somebody narrate, narrates, somebody says aloud the like action that is taking place on the screen. So it'll be like, oh, we got to go upside down. We got to go to the upside down zone. And then it says the kids from that show to go on their bikes. <laughs> it's very dark out. It's bizarre and kind of fun. So check but it out. We're doing it both uh for the blind people but also for the people on spotify 
So we're better than Netflix because we're yeah. going to an even wider audience. For the dumb, deaf, dumb, <laughs> deaf, and blind. Um, okay, so on so- screen, on screen right here, fall 2014, even just the cover image of this, um, it's like a bomber jacket with a kind of like rounded cut. Um, uh-huh. And you see the pattern in the pants is like this purple kind of almost tie dye ish pattern in the trousers. And I think just this entire fit is something that you would have seen Raf doing like literally a year ago. Mm. Mm. Well, mm. I would say that Raf was doing it as well, but I agree with you. I think that this is something that is cool and remains cool. Um, is this the season with the, the zipper bomber? Dries has a, a notable, like a, a grail for many where it's like a zipper that goes all the way around. It's like the zipper is on the sleeves. It goes up the shoulders behind the back and like Mm -hmm. down the other sleeves. I once had a quasi opportunity to buy one. It was far too massive for me. Um, But humor me, humor me one second. I will, but real quick while we're here, I also want to call out, there's this um, (laughs) geometric kind of parka on screen right now that again, uh, you could totally see it, Craig Green doing probably like five years later than this. Yeah, very Craig Green vibes. I have this Julius jacket. It has a very similar thing going on. Um, well, well, well. When you turn it inside out, it's easier to see. I don't think it's a ripoff. I don't think it's a ripoff of the Drees. Oh, it's, but... he's saying it's a ripoff. He's saying Julius no, is like a terrible, no. terrible, uh, plagiaristic no. brand. This is like one of my favorite jackets, but it's got like, you know, it's got when you turn it inside out, this is just, this is just an example. So you understand on okay. screen, Christian holds a Japanese bomber jacket with zippers on it. Ooh. Ooh. Um, okay. So we're going through this collection. We're going through this collection and, and, and immediately, like, if you showed me this, I would say, mm-hmm. oh, this looks like Dries Van Noten. Yeah. And, and, and it's definitely the, like, vibrant colors and, and the specifically, like, those tie-dye effects. Mm-hmm. That's what Dries has been doing over and over. And it, it's cool, and it's very much his style. I, I think it, this collection is interesting for all of the kind of more technical or, like, workwear-inspired stuff, mm-hmm. you know? Like, that's what, I guess, makes it look kind of Craig Greeny. Yeah. And I just uh, think it's like you also get the kind of unorthodox. Here's a great example. The unorthodox mixing of patterns and textures as well is something that is pretty much, I think, like completely owned by Dries Van Noten. Like on screen right here, you've got a kind of like of the taffeta-ish blazer, I guess, Uh in this kind of like almost lightning bolty, I don't know, like shard sort of pattern, but then the yeah. tie dye in the bottom. So you get this very like organic type thing at the bottom with this very harsh artificial kind of thing at the top, which I think very few other designers on planet earth would ever consider putting together. And other planets as well. Yeah. Fair. Venus. Um, yeah. it, it, we had a really, we just had a, a, a an interesting comment that okay. I would love you to yeah. pin. But I'm going to be honest with you. I have no clue how to pronounce this name. It begins with a P. It's okay. got like a lot of umlauts. <laughs> but um, Dries was mentioned in a song by Father John Misty. And that song and other songs by G- John Misty is kind of like, kind of how Dries feels like. A touch of Hindi, nostalgic, sometimes gaudy. Mm. I just, that's a fun take. That's a fun take. Um, I like Fleet Foxes. <laughs> In More. indie, nostalgic, and sometimes gaudy. Sometimes a little. That's gaudy. actually very accurate. Uh-huh. Like I, I can't find a way to to argue with that. I can't fight you on it. I can't fight no. you on it. You're right. And that makes me angry. We're here to yeah. fight, okay? It, it, and Father John Misty he's like the kind of person who it seems like a lot of people know outside of just indie. And mm-hmm. Dries is kind of like that. You know, he's not like gigantic, but people will probably know him. No. So here's a question for you, because I feel like a lot of times we can talk about these brands kind of in isolation in this theoretical way. Um, have you ever bought 
any Dries pieces? Well, I told you about that time when I almost bought that bomber. Right. Um, I've definitely interacted with a lot of Dries pieces in the past, mm-hmm. like when I did resale stuff. Mm-hmm. And like I said, at Esquire. Um, and I think it's dope. And I, I've known people who buy his stuff. Right. I don't think I necessarily have. 